much. The Vice President of Brazilian Coca-Cola, Vice President for um, Communications and Sustainability. In his position, he is responsible for the corporate marketing and corporate affairs, for social uh, responsibility and sustainable development. He's also the VP of the Board of Brazilian Advertisers Association. He is on the Board of Brazilian Association of Corporate Communications and on the Committee of uh, for Brazilian Sustainable Development. He has been the head of the commercial communications or operations or marketing departments in the industry for about 15 years in companies such as Avenue Group or Supervia, Accenture and now Coca-Cola. He has a degree in journalism from the University of Minas Gerais in Brazil, an MBA from the University in Denver and also completed work towards a master's degree in uh, mass communications in, uh, at the University of Sao Paulo. He is also an avid entrepreneur. He is involved in business ventures with investment in many different companies, one of them being actually a authorization, authorization agency. In his presentation, he is going to show us uh, different phases of Brazil. Not only Brazil, growing economic power, but also the human face of Brazil, Brazil of people. And the core of this presentation touches on the new important emerging economic power in Brazil, which is the middle class. He's also going to touch on the growing importance of technology in the everyday life in Brazil, and conclude with a specific view of Coca-Cola. I can promise you it's going to be a fascinating presentation, and if you're a foreigner like me who's only had a crush on Brazil, by the end of this presentation you might actually be in danger of literally falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marco? All okay. yours. <laughs> Thank you, Ev. I hope it's up to our expectations. <laughs> I actually have two main goals here. The first one is to uh, increase your knowledge about Brazil, about what's going on in our economy, and what type of challenges and opportunities the market has for every industry, including the tourism industry, but also other industries. And the second one, it's something that I agree to with Marcelo, is that all the boys in this presentation will make you laugh. And my goal is to make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, from that, we're going to have a lot of data. Ready? We go. Notebooks. Uh, oh, and speaking specifically about the, the, the title, it was created by Fabiano C. Okay? If you want to complain about it, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a country of about 200 million people. Nowadays. nowadays. It has been growing fast uh, for 60 years in different population, but the last decade or so, it's slowing down its pace. We're not supposed to grow nearly as fast as it grew in the past in terms of population wise. But that represents a very good opportunity for the country because it can really <coughs> change the face of this country. We're going to be a pop an adult population for the first time in the history of our country, five, over 500 years of history of Brazil. The first time that the mean age of our population is reaching 20 years old. Up until the last decade, it was around 15. <laughs> so we're growing from being a child society into being a teenager, almost adult society. So it's a great opportunity. And we all want to work for that too. This is also very unequal in terms of distribution of its regions. Brazil has is distributed in five main regions. The northern region, where you have we find only 7.8% of the population, it's where the Amazon forest is. For people who don't really know Brazil, uh, the Amazon <coughs> area is about 40% of the country. From here all the way to the north of the country. 40% of the area of the country, with 
the country uh, there is 8 million square kilometers. And the Amazon is for 40% of it only, about 8% of the population lives there, and it comprises 4.5% of the people. In the northeastern region, we have 28% of the population. It was one of the first regions that was occupied with the that is closer to Europe. And we have 15% of the output. And that's what the center west region is where the capital is, a lot of farmland, only 6 or 7 percent of the population, and 10 percent of the GDP. The southern section has a lot of industries, a lot of agriculture too. All most of the crops are there, cereals, um, 14.5 percent of the population, almost 16 percent of GDP. And finally, the south southeast region, where we are now, is the richest region of the country where we have the biggest cities. We have São Paulo, uh, Rio de Janeiro, Belo Horizonte, very industrial cities. And you have 54% of the GDP in this area. The good news is that before that, uh, this is now 10 years ago, it was even more concentrated in the southeast region. And it's changing slowly, but surely. But we are a very happy country. Two days ago, we saw the presentation by Alexandre and Celso here speaking about what's going on in terms of sports in Brazil. We're going to be the, that's a sports decade for the country. We're going to host in two years in a row. It's a lot of work for us to go to football, actually. Uh, both the World Cup, the Football World Cup, and the Olympics. That's a great challenge, but here is a day that the Olympics uh, were granted to Brazil, that, that's people celebrating on the street. That's how actually society felt about it. it Brazil is famous for its soccer, for the samba, for the carnival. We also have become an important nation in terms of businesses. We created totally from scratch, an industry for ethanol. Brazilian ethanol, uh, as you may know, is the most productive of the world. It's the only country that can actually produce in large scale ethanol to substitute oil for oil. And we did that because of the oil prices in the 70s. What happened was that just a few years ago, we found out the, uh, that Brazil had the largest new oil reserves in the world. So right now, we figured out that the oil industry must boom in Brazil because of the new oil found in the country. But it's still uh, the number one in that found. We produce airplanes. I, I put airplanes there just as an example for every other industry we're in. It's a, a, a very, uh, we have a lot of different industries in Brazil. It's very diversified. And we also have, from a, uh, an environment sustainability standpoint, we are a country that is lucky to be responsible for almost 80% uh, of the Amazon forest. We also have the Pantanal region, which is a fantastic region in the central section of the country. There is a flooded area that has rivers, rivers, rivers. Most of the water of the world is in Brazil. The surface water, about 15% about of all the surface water in the world is in Brazil. And we also have the Planet Green Forest that was very, very good forest because that's where most people arrived in Brazil since the 1500s. And it was depleted. Only 7% is remaining today. But there's a huge national effort to rebuild it. So rebuilding this area can actually make a future for us for our for the future generations. So we're in this one. I don't know how many of you saw they recovered this magazine a few times about a month ago. And it's true. Brazil is taking off. Brazil has been called the land of the future for very, very long. And for the first time, I can say that the future is now. The future is happening now. That's a good news for us and for all of our industries.